Yeah, great to have you with us on DXB today for our Weddings and Proposals special. Now, things have changed in the wedding world, especially uh, in the years since I got married. Uh, back then, it was all about the traditional invite. Piece of card, embossed with a lovely bit of calligraphy and more. <laughs> This all changed, hasn't it? So interested to get an insight into the sort of stationary side of things, the invite side of things, and how a company like the Card Company can help. We've been joined by the marketing manager, Lynn Razian, who's joined us here. Lynn, thanks for joining us. Of course. So just in light of that uh, and the, the, the world that we live in at the moment, is there still a sort of demand for traditional old hard card invites? Definitely. Traditionally, traditionally and culturally, people are still uh, making invitations. Um, obviously, a lot of people are going for digital cards, but those aren't as memorable as a printed wedding invitation. Printed wedding invitations are kind of the first part of going into a wedding. Mm. You know, you're presenting people with a piece of card that shows the colors and textures and the theme of your wedding. And it's more memorable. You're kind of looking at it, feeling it, the texture, the smell, everything about it is the couple. So it's 10 times better to have a wedding invitation on hand rather than a digital one. Yeah. And from my experience, a lot of the times I forget that I received digital invitations. Yeah. I am like, I'm, I wasn't invited to this event, I don't know. And they're like, well, they sent them digitally. But I feel like a wedding invitation on hand is more. And we've all got a drawer full of Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Or the shoe boxes that are under the bed. Yeah. I love them. They're I know, they are. They're I mean, but it one. depends on the invitation. Some some are a lot, lot more lavish and a lot more yeah. bigger than others. Yeah. Uh, so, and you, you do all different types and sorts of. Every single kind. Uh, we do everything from Passport wedding invitations, which are over here in different colors and styles. Um, this is a great way for des destination weddings because you can actually put the entire plan inside the book. So it's it's incredible. And then we do very classic, simple ones. We also have uh, velvet and gold wedding invitations. It's really whatever your wedding is going to be, it's going to be in that um, invitation. <laughs> Bring them out, Tom, one by one. Or feeling these. I mean, you brought, you have this extraordinary no. box over here, too. Yes. I mean, yes. how big do people go? What are some of the most extravagant to request that you've gone? Keep going, Tom, as I'm talking here. Okay. Keep showing them off. I'll do my best. We go, we go really big. We have people that want to put so many things inside a box just for their wedding. Uh, for example, this one that we have, this is. I don't know if you could see it, but the blind debossing on the box itself is the heritage of Dubai, which is really, really special. We did this for one of our royal uh, clients and it was a really, really intimate experience. And so we wanted to put everything that they told us into that box, but it gets really big. People actually have the craziest ideas when it comes to invitations. So, um, and it's amazing to see it evolve. Like some people want really, really simple invitations and other people want a giant box with a thousand cards in it. And yeah, it's just crazy. I love that scene, but that goes back to, you remember what we were saying earlier about access and excess as well, and anything is possible. I mean, not, not getting that through a letterbox back in the UK, <laughs> are you? <laughs> so Lynn, um, how do you get the right brief out of a client? Because ideas are, are you know, so many, but to make sure that you get the right brief so that you're able to design and execute the perfect invitation for your client. We always prefer when somebody comes in, we always get these calls of our clients saying, hi, how much is this card? We don't work that way. Our experience, we want to have an experience with the client, like a very personal experience. So it's very important that they come in. And the way that it is, is that sometimes over the phone, we wouldn't get what what they actually want. And then in person, they get to see our store, our studio, um, the paper, the different types of designs we've done for people. We've had clients that have called us and say that they want this design and they're sure. And then they come in and then they change their mind because they're seeing all the other designs. <laughs> so it's always, always better to come in, uh, have a look and feel of all the invitations that we've done. It's so, so important. And it, it kind of, it's a nice experience to sit with our designers and to sit with our team. And it's, it's way better than doing it over the phone. And we're old school, we like to keep it that way. We're still gonna print, we have old print press. We're gonna keep it that way beyond, so. And was that, I mean, from a sort of fashion and styling point of view, mm -hmm. is it imperative to sort of have that, um, the, 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 the link between, as you Definitely. said, the first, the first, almost the first thing, you, the first indication you get of a wedding, etc., to the final delivery. I think it does. I think you know, like we said, it's it's about many different elements coming together in perfect synergy. So uh, 
you know, like she mentioned as well, it's, you know, it kind of gives you an idea of the look and the feel of the wedding. So it could be a destination wedding like um, Arun was talking about. So in that sense, the, the invite will kind of reflect the same, you know, whether it's through the colors or just generally the feel of, the, mm. you know, the material they're using. And then obviously if, you know, the bride and groom prefer to go with something more traditional, then, you know, obviously mm. everyone follows suit accordingly. Yeah. So Lynn, like just trailer. one last question before we yeah. let you go. We were talking about trends and you mentioned the passport, which I thought was so fun and I'd never seen that before. Any yeah. other trend that we may not know about that you think um, is really interesting? Right now for 2024, the trends are more abstract lines, very, very colorful, a lot of destination weddings and they're bringing what the destination is into the card. So if you're going to Italy, the card's gonna be all Italian themed <laughs> style. It's gonna come a bowl with pasta. Yes, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, that's that's the main thing right now. Colorful abstract lines is in for 2024. Well, thanks so much, Lynn. This has been a thanks wonderful. So I've loved. I'm 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 excited to look through all these cards, and of course, we saw a lot Thank of the so uh, footage from your company. And wishing you all the best. Thank of success. you so much. Thank thanks you for guys so on our much. Show. Thanks. Now we're gonna keep you here for a second while Lane. I'm gonna shift the spotlight over to you. It's my favorite time of the show. DXB and sixty. I know. You know, this show goes so quick, and we need as much information as possible. So we're gonna give you a quick, quick fire. Uh, we've got two of you. This is going to be a first. I like this. So we're going to start the clock in 60 seconds and get as much information out of you as possible. So three, two, one, let's go. So if you weren't creating fashion or planning weddings, what would you be doing? Cooking. I'd love to be a chef. Mm, awesome. Shima? Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur at heart, so I'd probably be doing some business or the other. Nice. Your motto in life and work? Live and let live. Work hard, party hard. Ooh, my kind of girl. Your hidden gem in Dubai. Um, or Farley Brothers. Mm, pretty good. Mm. Yeah, Bossel 51. Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. I've been here for 40 years of my life. There are quite a few. <laughs> um, I would say the old school Jumeirah Beach. 40 years, let's just talk about that. Like what? Yeah. Great, yeah, do you remember it's called Chicago Beach? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. oh yeah, sorry. Um, your dream <laughs> collaboration. With, uh, I would say, uh, a global international designer. Yeah. Um, to design a wedding with Sabia Sachi. Nice, nice. Okay, and last but not least, the time's run out, but why Dubai? I think Dubai is the best of many worlds and extremely comfortable and uh, it is home for us now so yeah i mean i've seen dubai change you know 40 years is pretty much my whole life and um, i think it's a it's a city that has um, given everybody the opportunity to really enjoy and experience life to its you know full potential Thank you so much. Thank you. That was incredible. Ladies, thank you so thank much. Thank you for having the us. Creators having behind us. the collective thank for co-hosting today. Thank, thank you very much thank indeed. Thank you so much. Uh, thank to you. the creator of the card company as well. Thank you so much thank indeed for you. being with us. Uh, some uh, amazing guests with us here today. And it hasn't finished there either because coming up, we're heading down to the fridge. Uh, so uh, get ready to get warm with Shahir, who has been finding out a little bit more about our special artist playing us out tonight. Man that needs little introduction, but how much do we know about him really? Jay Abbo has been talking to Shahir. What's up guys, we're at the fridge in Al Surikal, this time joined by a familiar face to the show, Jay Abbo. How's it been? It's, it's been really good, thanks for having me again. Always happy to be here. Always a pleasure. So since we've last seen you, can you tell us what you've been working on? Any changes in your life? Yeah, I'm, honestly, I've just been surfing in Sri Lanka <laughs> for the past two weeks. I had a, I had a wedding of uh, two really good friends there. Of course, I'm working on, on you know, finishing up some singles that I'm releasing soon. Uh, and uh, I'm also, well, I'll tell you a little bit more about, about, about while, while I was in Sri Lanka, um, these friends, they're my old friends, they don't live here anymore, but they were the people who supported me in like my first open mics, my first performances. And so they, were, they just kept pushing me to, to also release the old songs, because I have like 10 old songs. I worked on an album a really long time ago and I never released them. So I'm also now thinking about doing like a live EP or a live album with all those songs in them, just release them really fast, you know. I just, I feel like uh, I need to get that old music out as well, you know. 
And let's say you might be going through a phase of a creative block. What would you do to overcome that? Just like get yourself out of that funk? Uh, you allow yourself to write a bad song. So you have to allow yourself to, the priority has to finish to be finishing a project. So you start a song and you don't put any expectations on it and you just finish it. And uh, I think it was Ed Sheeran who said, uh, you know, songwriting is like, a, is like an old faucet. Like when you first open it, you gotta let all the brown water gunk come out and then it clears up over time, right? So when you've written all the bad songs, uh, and sometimes what you think is a bad song in the beginning will surprise you in the end. Like it takes a spirit of its own, the song, you know what I mean? And for any creatives looking to make a name for themselves here in Dubai, what's your one piece of advice to them? So Dubai is, is a place where sometimes you get lost in, in the gigging, and as in gigging to make money, and you, um, you, 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 you forget about the music because then you kind of like, you, you kind of go into the world of you're a professional musician rather than an artist. And it's a very thin line because, you know, uh, from, from most people's viewpoints and even from your own, you're like, you know, I'm doing what I love. But are you really when you're going to a gig and performing songs that aren't yours? No, that's a job, you know? So I would say like, you know, there's benefits to having a job, but that's not the art and that's not where the art comes from. It's a good place to practice. It's a good place to, uh, perf to learn how to perform better. Uh, but just like, don't mistake the two, you know? One is being a professional musician and one is being an artist. And I think to, to, to make it and to be sustainable, you have to have your feet in both of those things. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jane. What could we expect from tonight's performance? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a new original uh, that I wrote for, for my friends as a wedding gift for their wedding that I just went to in Sri Lanka. Uh, it's called Meant For Me and it's uh, about just, you know, uh, my interpretation of their story. I've known them ever, I've known them before they met individually and then I knew them as a couple and now I know them as a husband and wife. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was really beautiful writing something not for me uh, and it was it was easy, honestly. It took me five days. It stressed me out a little bit, but it, it, it all just came out in the end. You know, it just came together in the end somehow. Like I said, like the, it's important to make the priority finishing the song, you know, even if you don't believe in every line, you know? Just like let the process happen and yeah. let it go. Yeah. Well said. Thank you so much. And guys, do stay tuned for after a very short break, we're going to have Giabo perform here at the fridge in Al Sarkal.